Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Vakti Bhakti Varanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Sahaswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Bancha Kalpa Turu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pae Bacha Patita Nam Bhavne Gyo Vaishnave Gyo Namaho Namaha Taishi Krishna Chaitanya Bhattananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Shiva Sri Gaunta Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare does a Vaishnav discriminate or does a Vaishnav not discriminate? Discrimination is one of the principles of Vaishnav culture. And that discrimination is a very important part of staying on course in, in both understanding and in the practice of Krishna consciousness. So we discriminate between what is favorable for the execution of devotional service and what is unfavorable. And uh, there are listings in the Shastras which clearly delineate these two categories. And it's, it's incumbent upon the devotees to make a point to learn what to discriminate how to discriminate between what is favorable or unfavorable devotional service. My experience in Krishna consciousness is that devotees are very good, you might say, or very much aware about what we should do and how to practice Krishna consciousness. But we have a tendency to be very weak in the other category, what we should avoid. And because of that, our bhakti doesn't, or our progress in Krishna consciousness is somewhat retarded or slow. I see this in my experiences in Krishna consciousness, the devotees are too easily go along with a lot of the materialistic ways of doing things and don't know that many of them are prohibited and should be, you know, pushed aside and not included in the execution of devotional service, even either in, in word and in deed. Of course, in thought, they may come up, but they, they should be understood clearly so we know. And that is one of the six symptoms of surrender to know what is favorable and what is unfavorable. Um, we know it's chanting Hare Krishna is favorable, but we know chanting Hare Krishna was with offenses is unfavorable. We know that eating prashadam is favorable. But then we have to discriminate what is actually prashadam and what cannot be included in the category of prashadam. Uh, we sometimes fail to recognize how to properly deal with a situation based on the etiquette that is given to us in terms of the relationships with other people who are similarly involved in that situation. And sometimes we bring in or include materialistic tendencies and ideas. So um, this more subtle but very important part of our Krishna consciousness is, uh, is, um, import, is, uh, is essential in order to make progress. Just like a devotee is kind to all living entities. But that kindness has a certain boundary 
and a certain understanding. It's not that one is simply kind in a, in a materialistic way and thinking that that kind of kindness is also acceptable. For instance, giving in charity, one has to very carefully discriminate who the recipient is and whether that recipient will benefit from that charity as given. For instance, there are people who are hungry, there are people who are needy. And so many times devotees support such efforts to help people. But without careful discrimination or understanding, I think that's a better word, careful understanding, we may be furthering a person's sense gratification by trying to help them in their deprived situation. For instance, you, you find how the government works, just like in India. They tried many ways to uh, help people who are very much in a deprived situation living in cities. Many of them live in quite uh, unmentionable conditions. And so the government has uh, offered some of these people better places to live and to reside and also given them some, you know, finances. But what do the people do? They continue to live where they are and they rent out the places that the government gives them and make money from that. <laughs> and then they use the money for sense gratification. So what appears to be some kind of a charitable effort turns into be uh, uh, exasperating or enhancing the same problem that they're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes just like kindness. Uh, there Prabhupada talks about the story of kindness and how there is what is called Mohan, Moha and Sneha. Sneha means affection and Moha means illusion. Uh, affection in the wrong way is an, is an example of Moha or illusion or affection for the wrong thing or the wrong person or in the wrong situation can uh, it just exasperate the situation. And Prabhupada tells two stories. One about this one young boy whose mother died at a very young age. And so his auntie, she took care of him. And the boy was quite mischievous and he liked to steal things. So he was stealing things. And as Prabhupada describes it, he was bringing it home and the auntie was thinking, oh, this is very good. Or Prabhupada was saying, but maybe she was thinking, I don't want to scold the boy because, you know, you know, I, uh, she didn't want to take any kind of position of correcting him or chastising him. She just let him go on with that. You might say that out of some kind of misplaced affection. So this went on. And as he grew up, he got into bad association. And one time he committed a murder. He was caught, taken to court and sentenced to death. His, my, his auntie was in the courtroom and she was crying, uh, hearing that her, you know, nephew was going to be, you know, sentenced to death. So the boy, now he's a man, he said to the judge, can I have a few moments with my auntie before I, I, I'm taken away? And they said, yes. Yeah. So he went over to her and he was acting like he wanted to tell her something secret or confidential, but he came very close to her ear and as hard as he could, he bit her on the ear, which caused great pain and cutting her ear. Now she jumped back and now immediately he responded. He said, you're crying now. 
but it's too late. You know, why if you, you should have corrected me when I was doing all these wrong things, but now it's too late, your tears have no meaning. So that's called misplaced affection. Uh, sometimes we also do that also for family members and friends. If we don't give our family members Krishna consciousness or help them to become Krishna conscious, that is called Mohan or misplaced affection. Uh, which is called Mohan means simply means illusion. Illusion about affection. Now we have another example in the life of one great devotee. His name was Shivananda Sain. And Shivananda Sain was given the service of accompanying and arranging for all the devotees to travel every year to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri during the Rathiyatra. So they would travel from Navadweep Dam to Jagannath Puri, and usually the travel took about a month's time using, you know, bullock carts and horses and walking, mostly walking. And Shivananda Sain would have to take care of the, the tolls going through the different the toll places. And he would arrange for their food. He would arrange for their living conditions. He would do everything. And he would have a, a group of devotees assisting him. One time, one dog wandered into their assembly. And Shivananda Sain felt very compassionate towards the dog. And so he uh, allowed the dog to come along with the rest of the devotees and he would give food to the dog regularly. And this was going on and the dog was traveling alone. One time when they were traveling, they came across one particular toll booth where Shivananda Sain had to spend extra time working it out with the authorities there to get all the devotees across. Now, he sent all the devotees ahead and he said, I'll be coming with you once I settle all this. So please don't forget to feed the dog. So he stayed back and they continued to travel. After finishing his business with the toll, toll collectors, he joined the party again. But he was looking and he couldn't find the dog. And then he asked, what happened to the dog? And they said, we don't know. Did you feed the dog? Oh, we forgot to feed the dog. So Shivananda Sain was thinking, oh, Krishna has sent this dog, who's a spirit soul partner, is a, is a living entity to the association of devotees. And it was my duty to take care of him and I failed, and therefore he left. So he was feeling like he had neglected his duty towards the dog because the dog came. And in other words, he actually became one of the devotees as he was associating with the devotees. So even if a dog associates with the devotees, the dog gets the benefit of that association. And Sivananda Singh was lamenting and but what could he do? The dog was gone. And so after some time, they all arrived in Jagannath Puri. And the protocol was to go immediately to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as soon as they arrived. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at his place, and Sri Vananda Singh and a few of the senior devotees came to, to uh uh Tell Mahaprabhu, we are all here for the Ratha Yantra and to offer their obeisances and, and, and respects to Mahaprabhu. But when they came in, they saw a very interesting sight is that that same dog that had been with the group had now come 
to the place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya was throwing green coconut pulp to the dog. And he was telling the dog, Chan Hare Krishna. <laughs> And the dog, as it's described in that Leela, was in his dog-like way, was chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> this is Mahaprabhu. <laughs> he has that power. And so the next day, the dog left its body, but it was understood that the dog had received full mercy and went back to the spiritual world. Wow, everyone was delighted to hear that. Now, what was the dog's qualification? It was a dog. <laughs> That's all. But he, had, he got the association of the devotees. But not only did he get the association with the devotees, he got the favor of the devotees. He got the, he got the, he got the protection of the devotees. Shivananda Sain made it a, a point to take care of that dog as if that dog was like any of the other uh, associates of Mahaprabhu. And because he got the mercy of the guru, or you might say of the great devotee, then he got the mercy of the Lord. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness. Of course, there's two points, but one point I wanna make is the process of Krishna consciousness is twofold. One has to get the mercy of a great soul and then, or an empowered soul, and then one can get the mercy of the Lord. To try to get the mercy of the Lord directly, we do offer prayers to the Lord and that is proper and we should do that. And that is very much in line with our practice of Krishna conscious, one of the nine ways to serve the Lord is by offering prayers to the Lord. And there's so many beautiful prayers written in the Srimad Bhagavatam by which we can connect with, learn and offer these prayers to the Supreme Lord, or we can offer individual prayers that are in line with the principles of Krishna consciousness. In other words, we can't offer prayers for material things, the Lord, will not really respond to these types of prayer. Sometimes he does, but very rarely. That's only in certain cases when the Lord will see that by fulfilling a person's material desire, it helps them become more Krishna conscious. But generally that is not the case and devotees avoid that very carefully. So offering prayers are very important. So in order to get the mercy, of the Lord, we need the mercy of Guru and Krishna, not just mercy of Krishna, but mercy of Guru and Krishna, both are required. And the other point in this particular pastime is that uh, Srivananda Sain didn't discriminate. We have that verse in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hastini. Suni Chaiva Svabhake Cha Pandita Samadarshana. One becomes Samadarshan. Sama means mm, uh, equal, and Darshan means vision, equal vision to all living entities, despite or whatever particular body that living entity is inhabiting becomes uh, secondary, the most important part of that understanding of that living entity is that it's part and parcel of Krishna and Krishna is situated in the heart of all living entities. Therefore, if one can serve any living entity, one is serving the stream Lord in the heart of that living entity. So we serve in different ways according to the type of living entity needs. For instance, animals, we give them prasadam. Mm -hmm. Or we might allow them to hear the kirtan. We are, many times we've seen in our temples, sometimes usually it's cats. Cats will come 
sometimes near the door and just sit there and listen to the morning program. I've seen that a few times in different places. A cat will be there and just listen and sit and listen to the kirtan in the morning program. Prabhupada talk, not, not Prabhupada, I'm sorry. The devotees talk about one particular monkey. And this was an interesting situation. The devotees were staying in the, the Vrindavan temple, Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan. And there were many times the classes were held in the courtyard of Krishna Balaram temple. There's a big courtyard. And when the weather is nice, then uh, the classes are held in the courtyard. And uh, well, even the temple itself is open. There is no walls around the temple. On, on, on uh, one side, it's completely open. So the courtyard connects with the temple with, with no barriers in between. But even when we used to do programs in the courtyard, there would be one monkey and every Thursday, now this is interesting, this monkey would appear and he would find his place on the wall and sit there. And then when the class was over, he would leave. And then you wouldn't see him again. Same monkey would come again on Thursday again and he would come back to his same sitting place. Now you can see that although they're in a lower species of life, um, by Krishna's grace, and you might also say by the mercy of the holy places, they are getting a chance to make advancement in spiritual life. And usually at the end of that life, well, of course, in Vrindavan, many of the monkeys, pigs, and dogs were uh, great souls in a previous life but they had been living in Vrindavan. They've been committing offenses while they were living in Vrindavan. And so they died in Vrindavan because they died in Vrindavan. They ate the dust of Vrindavan. And that's very auspicious. Anyone who gets the dust of Vrindavan, it's like the pigs, they eat the dust of Vrindavan. The dogs roll in the dust of Vrindavan. The monkeys are all over. So these uh, living entities, because of offenses in previous life, were forced to take birth in these lower species, but in Vrindavan. And then they finish out their life in that particular body and then back home, back to Godhead. In other words, they, they reach perfection because they're meant to suffer in these lower animal bodies for one life to make up for their offenses that they had committed in the Dham. Uh, so it's interesting. There's many other stories of uh, living entities and animal bodies who have received special mercy and have been very special living entities, although it appears that they're just an animal. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, a devotee, he has that consciousness. He discriminates. Well, yes, the discriminating is there. This is an animal. And so it has to be treated in a certain way. And of course, in some cases, we avoid such uh, animals. But when there's an opportunity to benedict a living entity, in some way or other, now, especially in Grihasta life, there is an injunction in Grihasta life, which is quite fundamental to the ashram, that every day, and I emphasize this point, every day, the Grihastas is required to distribute prasadam to other living entities, not just family members whether it's dogs, ants that live in the hole of your house, in the room, uh, other devotees or people in general. That is, a, that is an injunction that must be followed by those who live in household life. Why? Because household life is, is, is designed in such a way as to give this, the living entities who are there, they think 
this is my house. This is my children. This is my husband. This is my wife. Janasamoham yam maham mametim. These are the these are the principles of illusion. <laughs> Nothing belongs to us. Everything belongs to Krishna, and everything Krishna allows us to use it and play different roles in this material world. We play the role as a wife. We play the role as a husband. Play the role as a teacher. We play the role as a guru. We're all playing roles, but a real role is based on our identity, Jivar Sarupai Krishna Nichidas. That role has to be in line with our identity. And what is that identity that we are servant? So, and because we are servant of Krishna, and we are also servant of everything in relationship to Krishna. Therefore, his parts and parcels are objects of our service also. So whatever way one can serve, then one is understanding clearly what is my purpose in life. We are not enjoyers. We are simply servants. Enjoyment comes through the process of serving according to our particular position in relationship to all living entities. So we, we find happiness through service because that's our nature. <laughs> that's our nature. If someone serves us and we get some enjoyment for them, then we, we think, oh, well, that person gained something by, by service to me. They became happy or they got some benefit. So we, we can find satisfaction that, oh yes, I'm not, I'm not an enjoyer, but if somebody wants to serve me for my enjoyment, I can accept that because that's, that's beneficial for them. So a lot of times we allow people to serve us in order for their benefit. And that's how Krishna works too. Krishna doesn't, leave, doesn't need any of our service. He's Atmarama, he's self-contained. He is the all powerful controller in all aspects of existence, all levels of existence. But he lets us serve us because by us serving him, we benefit. We benefit. Now that's the understanding. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. And Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for a very nice class. Um, uh, about like uh, 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 like how Vaishnavas, uh, we have to discriminate between favorable and unfavorable for the devotional service and how service is very important. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the very nice class. Uh, uh, dear devotees, uh, please um, unmute yourself if you have any questions or you can type in the chat box or you can raise your hand. Thank you. looking at participants um, I don't see any questions good Maharaj right now so Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glory to Srila Prabhupada all glory to you Maharaj um, okay Hare Krishna I hold my obeisances okay Manav, this was a very, uh, very uh, valid and uh, 
uh, I think it brings out a lot of uh, finer details about, the, especially Vivek, which is discrimination. Because sometimes when we think what is discrimination, it becomes, it could be a, a sentimental thought. And I think I had that question before, which uh, you explained uh, very nicely a few classes ago. Maharaj, I have a question in regards to discrimination. What should be the guide for us as devotees to discriminate? What should, through which lens we should look at what's favorable, what's not favorable? Because on a Shastra. Guru Shastra. Yeah. Taking the words and guidance from Guru and Shastra, we use that as a basis to discriminate. If we go on our own intelligence, we may be right or we may not be. But if we take the guidance of higher intelligence as a principle for the, uh, discriminating on how to see things and how to respond to something, then uh, we're in. We're that's perfect. That's you're in. You're in a. You can't. You can't go wrong from that position. It's called shastra. Chak Shastra Shakshu, seeing through the eye of scripture. And Guru, Guru Sadhu Shastra, these are the three principles by which we obtain knowledge. And Maharaj, when there are some uh, details about application of those things, we reach out to devotees or seniors uh, on that application. Um, and then uh, I, th I think you are right. Uh, no, I, no, I, it's not about I think you are right. But the challenge that I face sometimes is when we go and when I am troubled on the application of those things, you get two different views, completely sometimes the opposite views of how those things should be applied in special discrimination. Yeah, that comes up all the time. I, had, I received a letter this morning that was pretty much based on what you're just saying. Seeing a situation requires some activity, action. People are seeing it from different angles. People are given different opinions according to the situation. But ultimately one has to make a decision and one has to see what knowledge or what information they can gather in order to have that as the basis for making that decision. If we're only going to take our, what we say, empiric vision or intellectual uh, means to evaluate and respond to a situation might be limited, probably will be limited. Gather information from the right sources or from the spiritual sources. Also look into the past and see if that situation has come up before and how people have dealt with it. That's called precedent. You know, when you go to a court of law, a judge a lot of times gives a decision based on a decision that was made in the past by a, in a similar situation. So there's another form of, of knowledge that you can access, historical references. So there's three things, historical reference, essential, essential uh, observation, and scriptural knowledge. Put all three of those together and see which one becomes prominent or a combination of all three. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, that's the total answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In the day, day life, sometimes we have to make quick decisions. We should definitely refer to the instructions of the spiritual master. In this case, Srila Prabhupada's books <laughs> and his lectures. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. And Maharaj, another observe, well, uh, every time I do preaching um, and 
when some of the followers are do, hearing something else, I always tell them to discriminate, to use their intelligence to see, uh, put as a Bhagavad Gita as a reference point and see what is right and what is wrong. Many times the feedback, you know, you get from people who are sort of, uh, well, I wouldn't say more of goodness, but, you know, they, you know, happy go along people, you know, their feedback is, oh, yeah, but, you know, we shouldn't really comment on some somebody or some other institution. You know, we, we are in no position to comment on them. And, and my argument, not argument, but when I, you know, my position to them is that, you know, we have been given intelligence, so we should discriminate right and what is wrong. Otherwise, you know, how can you? That, that is the purpose of intelligence. So, so am I right in my thinking in in preaching to to relay those messages, Maharaj? Yeah, there is a category of the narthas called philosophical misconceptions, which which has four categories. Um, one of the categories is not knowing the difference between real religious principles and sub-religious principles or a pa uh, principles that are contrary to religion. So yeah, that's a discriminating principle that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And the 10 offenses require, 10 offenses to the holy name require explanations on each one in order to understand what they are and getting further explanations, understanding, so you can apply it properly. So yeah, our whole our whole basis of our movement is to avoid what is not in line with devotional principles, mm -hmm. such as Mayavadi philosophy, which comes out to look a lot of times like Krishna consciousness. Give you an example, chanting the holy names. The Mayavadis chant the holy names also. Well, their chanting is useless. It doesn't have any benefit because they're chanting to go beyond the chanting. They think the chanting is a means to the end. They don't understand that chanting is the end in itself. The goal of chanting is chanting. But even if they know that, they think chanting will bring you to the unmanifested, uh, undifferentiated aspect of the absolute truth known as Brahman. So that's the, you know, so their whole motivation is, is off. <laughs> Or they ch they chant so they can realize themselves as being the supreme. They take a guru, but the guru for them is simply a ladder that can be used and dispensed with once you re reach the goal. You have to know these things or else you get trapped into you know, these wrong conceptions. That's what Prabhupada, I mean, Prabhupada put so much time and effort to explain all these things to us. <laughs> so the knowledge is available. Yes, Mara, thank you for clarifying because that's what I, I try to put into preaching as well, where you have to discriminate. Yes. And, and you have a foundation by which you, you resort to for the knowledge you get for discrimination. That's Srila Prabhupada's books, his words, his lectures, the words of Krishna in the, in, the, in the scriptures also. But then again, you have to know where they're found and how to apply them. Spiritual life is a subtle science. It's not such a gross science like, you know, like electronics. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. This has clarified. Thank you very much.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू प्रभु जी आई डोंट सी एनी क्वेश्चंस गुड मार्च और राधा विनोद जी माता जी प्लीज हर हैंड माता जी प्लीज गो हेड Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances our glories to Shri Rupa Prabhupada and our glories to you uh thank you very much for for uh, bringing up this topic because uh, I I think it's it's really really useful for all of us and um it just brought me to a point uh, to <clears throat> where where I couldn't really discriminate <laughs> um because uh, just yesterday I I read um uh the the story of uh, lord ramachandra when uh, when he was young and uh, vishram vishwamitra muni came to uh, vishwamitra muni came to uh, to take him to to help him uh, get rid of those demons and uh, lord ramachandra's father was my uh, was the point uh, which I, i i really didn't understand uh, uh what what would have been the the proper uh, reaction from him because he at first didn't want to uh, to give lord ramachandra to vishwamitra muni but it seemed to be uh, love and affection so so i was just comparing to to like mother yashoda was was also uh, really protective of krishna so what was the difference between between the two that that uh, dasharat maharaj's uh, reaction wasn't good uh yeah his 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 reaction was natural but then he understood there was another principle there and that was a great a great sage had come on uh, for a request and to refuse him would have been a great offense and ram also indicated he wanted to go when he came okay. when he came so after weighing the situation he thought i can't refuse this great personality i see uh thank you very much uh, yeah that would have been an offense on his part as to how he felt so uh, so his original reaction was natural so there was no problem with that uh well that was his natural reaction was to feel very protective of his I mean ram was only 16 at the time he was still we considered a boy and then when he heard what the request was these two powerful demons subaha and um, maricha they were very powerful demons he was concerned that you know his sons wouldn't be able to match up but you know vishwamitra muni knew the power of ram even at that age so he didn't he was in full knowledge of the situation but dasarad was overshadowed by parental affection okay i i, th- I think it's it's much more clear now thank you very much okay hari krishna hari krishna thank you mata ji sridevi mata ji uh, please go ahead thank you sir uh, is that all right Yeah, Sri Devi. Yes. Yes. We we're asking the devotees to turn on their videos when they speak and not be just a blank screen. Yes, yes. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada all glories to you Guru Maharaj. Um Guru Maharaj you spoke about this uh, very important anartha in which you said there are four categories of anarthas. one of which is philosophical misconceptions would you kindly elaborate on the four uh, categories of philosophical misconceptions if you don't yeah know? one is to not know your own identity mm-hmm. two not knowing the position of krishna and three is not knowing the, the process of sadhana and prema bhakti 
Hmm. Not knowing who you are, mm -hmm. at least theor theoretically, you should know I am a spirit, soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Even if you don't know it in realization, at least you should have that theoretical understanding that you're not this body. Mm -hmm. You are a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. The other one is knowing Krishna's position as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's all found in the scriptures. Krishna describes mm -hmm. who he is, what is his position, what is his relationships with, with, with the many different categories of living entities mm -hmm. and activities he performs. And the other one is uh, sadhana bhakti, how to execute sadhana bhakti. What are the rules and regulations that allow you to make progress in, uh, in the execution of your devotional service? And the fourth category is not knowing the difference between religious principles and philosophical misconceptions. Is that correct? Oh, you, you're mixing in something that is not, not in, not, not in line with bhakti, such as Mayavadi ideas or theories. Mixing in, uh, you know, materialistic ideas. You know, mm -hmm. bhakti's there, but mm -hmm. you you make a mixture out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you add things that are contrary to. Bhakti. It looks like bhakti too. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's uh, important to know these things. I think the most prominent point in that is Mayavadi uh, philosophy. Because if you, uh, I mean, the Mayavadi philosophy is very subtly uh, introduced in every aspect of life and you can find it everywhere if you know how to look for it and it's also there within the within the within the uh, practice of a lot of people who practice devotional service they still have maya body tendencies mm. Mm. right right thank you Guru Mara. thank you for saying it very clearly so that we are not having any confusion on this point uh, Guru Maharaj, at the end of our question and answers, there's a person who wants to say Hare Krishna from the Slovenia temple. If you will, oh, is okay. Hare Bol. Uh, Maharaj, my humble obeisances accept. Please, my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. Glories to Prabhupada. What is your name? What is your name? Gabriela. Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriela. Okay, my obeisances to you. Thank you. I hope you are happy. I say you that we are uh, missing you so much. The Maha cookies are not falling from that window, you know. <laughs> when we, know. we are missing a lot that. <laughs> well, then it's because Sri Devi hasn't taken over that service. She's supposed to do that. <laughs> Guru Maharaj. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I also wanted to ask you for your blessing today is my first, anniver first anniversary since I put my first feet in the temple, in a temple. Congratulations. Please have many, many more anniversaries after this Jai. one. <laughs> Thanks, Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Gabriel. Hare Krishna. Jai Hare Hare. Krishna. My humble way since this. Thank you, Guru Bharan. Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Uh, Guru Maharaj, we have a question uh, in, in the chat box by Vrinda Mataji. Um, can I uh, read Guru Maharaj? Who's that? Uh, by Vrinda Mataji. Uh, can I go ahead and read the question? Vrinda? Yes, yes, by Vrinda Mataji. Is she there? Yes, Mataji, Vrinda Mataji, would you like to go ahead and ask the question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept me humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Turn on your video. Maharaj, I, I don't have Tilak and all. I'm so sorry. You just, okay. okay. Go ahead and ask your question. Sorry, Maharaj. 
Yeah, Maharaj, my question was, uh, I've heard that it is not recommended to have pets at home as devotees. I'm not sure if I've heard it right, but um, if we have pets at home, they can eat prasadam every day at home, right? So is it okay to have them? Because my daughter has been asking. Well, it depends what kind of pets. Prabhupada, I mean, it's understood that dogs are by nature very dirty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And cats are quite clean. So some devotees, they do have cats, but, and there are also a few that have devoted. The, the Prabhupada said dogs are very devoted, dirty, mm. and dog stool contains dysentery in it. Okay. So dogs are not so clean, and usually you find in respectable people's homes, they, they remain outside. They don't come in the house at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you want to have a dog, keep it outside. Don't allow it in the house. Okay. okay. But devotees, devotees, pets are cat, cows, not dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as always to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, would, um, will you elaborate on this topic of uh, discrimination regarding service? In which way you want me to elaborate? Yeah, um, even I'm not, I don't know, Guru Maharaj, even I'm trying to understand. Um, so, well, the devotee, you... devotee, devotee wants to serve and whatever service they can do, they're happy. Yeah, but based on our capacity or based on our um, experience in Krishna consciousness, because uh, um, when big tasks are given to the new people, they may not have that maturity or that kind of. Uh, then you, uh, then, you, then you, then you have to, you have to guide them and teach them. Mm. Uh, when new people, we usually give them services just so to connect them with Krishna consciousness. When you stay in Krishna consciousness for an extended period of time, you start having a desire to serve in a certain way. And that's nice. But one should be not be attached to that. One should be attached to the principle of service. And if the way you want to serve is, all, is available and you can do that, then that's nice. That should be done. But... We have the institution and we have the individual. But the institution requires certain types of services to be done. And then you have the individual who may find one particular service more natural for them and other, other services more difficult. So we have to balance those two things together where the, both sides can be you know, satisfied in devotional service. But sometimes, it's just a situation, the service is needed, and one should not think, well, it's not my nature, or it's not what I like. No, one should serve. Yes, good Maharaj. You didn't like that answer. No, 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 not like that. I'm just thinking in that direction, Guru Maharaj, nothing like that. So I was thinking like, um, uh, can you uh, tell me where can I find the uh, Srila Prabhupada purports uh, regarding this particular topic, Guru Maharaj? What, get specific now. That's a broad topic you have to. Yeah. What's, you mean, and, yeah, he talks about the, he, Chapter Barnya Manasrista Guna Karma Vivagasaha. Four kinds of four kinds of activities, the four kinds of ashrams. Like that. Mm. So one has to get situated in their ashram. Mm. And then one also has to find that service that will uh, they can make they can do nicely and make progress. But then it requires guidance and many times evaluation by seniors and ultimately um, coming to some conclusion. The institution sometimes lacks manpower 
And because of that, then they give services to every to individuals according to what is needed, as opposed to what would be beneficial for that person in their own spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. But if one surrenders, then that's fine. But sometimes they can surrender in the short run, but in the long run, they find that they need something that will more complement their nature. And that, that can be given, but because of shortage of manpower, we say sometimes, the institution requires people to accept whatever's needed over what is what they would prefer to be doing. This is a dynamic that you have that has to be worked out. Yes, good morning. You don't find so much fault by discussing this in his books because it's more more organizational than it is mm. spiritual. Yes, good Master, I understood. Yeah, thank you, good Master. Okay, uh, is your husband there? Um, no, good Master, he went to office today. Okay, uh, so you know I'm coming on the 18th. Yes, good Master, he emailed you. I think. Um, did you get his email? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what airport I'm going to be flying from, but okay. Hartford is one place, and there are airports in that area also. So. You can see if there's any closer airports around that have more direct flights. So I'll tell him, uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, to check uh, the airports too. And, uh, yeah, don't don't just rely on Hartford. Kind of make a little scan. Okay, Guru Maharaj. And see what other areas are close by airports. Mm -hmm. Sure, Guru Maharaj. I'll tell him good match. Okay, and don't buy, don't book any tickets right away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good match. We'll inform you first, then only. Once okay. you have to, we can do. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Um, uh, okay, uh, thank you, um, Sudha. Thank you very much. Yeah, have ran out of time. We're after the hour. Oh, so. Uh, I have a one question, Guru Maharaj, if it's okay. Can I ask if it's still happening? Short one. Yeah, short one, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. So, Guru Maharaj, you um, have um, explained about like uh, kindness, like, uh, you know, uh, like in a two ways, like affection and uh, moha and sneha. Moha is like uh, showing uh, affection in a wrong way. Sneha is like uh, illusion. Um, so anything like... Uh, uh, when we show no, her. no, sneha is means affection. That's what the word means. Oh, okay. Doesn't mean in the wrong way, but when it's when it's misplaced, then in that sneha is moha, mohan. Okay, okay. Then it's illusion. It's not affection anymore. It's simply illusion. Okay. So misplaced sneha is becomes moha. Okay, misplaced sneha will become moha. So yes. anything like uh, that puts you like uh, in a Krishna conscious, it's like a sneha, any kindness that you show um, and uh, that will direct you to Krishna consciousness is sneha and moha is like, you know, you're sure you have that. to, yeah, the, the whole process of bhakti is based on emotion and motion and affection are very intimately connected. But then, you know, how you have to know how to do to give affection in, in a way that is beneficial. And I, sh I gave by example mm -hmm. those stories that misplaced affection becomes detrimental to everyone. Yes, yes, yes. And that requires some intelligence. Yes, <laughs> Not everything is spelled out for us. We have to understand things by our intelligence mm -hmm. or by our experience using the intelligence. Yes, yes, yes. So it's as a devotees, it's very important for us to understand. Uh, as a devotees, it's very important for us to understand um, these topics so that we can develop uh, like a strong discrimination. And uh, uh, when we uh, actually um, direct a person, so we can do it in the right way. Right, Guru Maharaj? Right. Yes, correct. Yes, yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, tomorrow's class is a little different time, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's with, uh, it's gone Harrisburg devotees and uh, it's uh, 7 a.m. Central uh, time, Chicago time, Guru Maharaj. 7 a.m. Yeah, it's 1 p.m. UK time and uh, 7 a.m. Uh, Chicago time. Okay. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll remind you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be chanting Japa while I'm giving class. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's good, Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.